Today, on the Canadian Way, the Subaru 2009 Tribeca. And guess what? I tried Becca one time, but it hands up with an SDI. <laughs> yeah. I've borrowed this car from Auto Public Mirabel, which is a small dealership located in Mirabel, specialized in affordable used car for everyone. They have vehicles for all your needs, including commercial vehicles. Go check out their amazing inventory on their website, link in the description below. Bonjour, hi! I would like to give a big thank you to Auto Public Mirabel for letting me review this car. The Subaru Tribeca arrived in North America in 2006 and was made to compete against luxury mid-size SUVs. But unfortunately, it didn't work because it was ugly Arc. and Subaru don't have the brand name to compete in that segment. In 2008 Subaru made a huge update. They redesigned it and scaled down to compete against the entry-level mid-size SUV. 2008 the economy collapsed and the Tribica due to its price failed to sell. When it was new, the Tribica worth $40,000, but this Tribica here is an Optimum, which is the fully loaded model, and starts at $48,000. Thanks to its colossal failure, nowadays we can have a bargain on these Tribicas. For a base model Tribica, it worth $5,000, and this fully loaded is $7,000 for a 7-seat passenger, reliable, what do you want more for a mid-size SUV? The general look of the Trubica is bland. In my point of view, because yes, I love POVs, <laughs> the front end of the Trubica looks like a Chrysler Pacific 2003. Front bumper is Baja scale. It's heavy duty, but it's subtle this time. On the side of the Tribica, it looks like every modern SUV. It looks like a minivan. These tires are 255, 55, 18 inch wheels, which are hard to find and they're expensive. Like every Subaru roof rack, they're overdone it like usual. As you can see here on the rear bumper, you have a hole so you can see your spare tire. I don't know why Subaru made that, but it's there. The rear end of the Tribica looks completely bland. Beginning the interior with the trunk. Here, behind the third row seat, you'll find 235 liters of cargo space. Here you'll find, on the driver's side, a 12 volt power outlet. And it's right in on it. To fold down the rear seat, all you have to do is pull those latches here. And here you'll find 1,063 liters of cargo space. Now to lower the second row seats. Come and help me, Charles. I can't. Oh, you have the... The Bible. The Bible. Yeah, I'm holding the Bible, so you can do it yourself. All right. Pull the latch here. Fold it down. Go on the other side. I know, I know. Then. You now have 2,106 liters of cargo space. The general size of the trunk is average and the reason is because the roof is low. Otherwise, this trunk is Cedar Park approved and dishwasher approved. Seating in the back, the door opens pretty wide. The driver's seat is back up at his maximum backup position. And as you can see, I don't have any place for my legs, but I can't even reach the brake pedal and the gas pedal with my feet. So there's a lot of place when the seat is totally back up at his maximum backup position. Now that the driver's seat is back up at my position, now I have a lot of space for my legs and enough headroom. On the rear door panel, all you'll find is window switch, a lot of storage space, and a headset because yes, there's a DVD player inside. 
here you'll find a DVD player that was a nice features from 2009 I'll also notice that on the ceiling you'll find some hair vents here because it's a tri-zone you'll also find some here on the back turbo seats to activate the hair vents all you need to do is turn this switch here oh, another rugged switch I definitely love that in a turbo seat all you need to do is pull the latch on the side of the second row seat <sighs> I'm five foot eight and I have no space here it's so tight the second row seat is back up at its maximum backup position and I just don't fit I'm five feet eight and I'm completely stuck here here on my left side you'll find a 12 volt outlet and a place to plug your PlayStation 2 so you can play PlayStation 2 in your Tribica getting on the front seat the door opens pretty wide my driving position is kind of weird look how I'm sit uh, Everything is easy to access, everything is well placed, I have tons of rooms, and the seats are comfortable. For an 11 years old car, look at these leather seats here. It's a great quality leather. Still have no cracks. Definitely a nice quality leather from Subaru. The presentation of the door is very nice, and we have lots of storage space. Although, we only have one automatic window switch and it's for the driver. Here, next to the steering wheel, we have a nice feature from Subaru. You can adjust your headlamp here, depending on how much people are sits in the Tribeca. This is a nice feature. Here we have the wiper defroster switch, which was a nice feature to have. On the steering wheel, all you have is switches for the radio control. And here we have the cruise control arm. And look how tight the flasher switch is. By the way, ladies, I'm still single. Uh, on the cluster, you won't find anything really particular, but on both sides, you'll find your fuel gauge, which is digital, and your temperature gauge here. here. We have a nice gauges which when you open the door you know which door is open talking about the infotainment first it's a touchscreen and not to forget that not, uh, that we were in 2009 which was pretty nice from the era and we have a lots of tools you can use from it here you have your fuel consumption Three gauges that shows you the uh, average per uh, 100 kilometers fuel consumption gauge. You have your acceleration, which is in percentage. You can here add some notes for the maintenance and add some dates. And a calculator. Have you ever saw a calculator in your infotainment? I never saw that also find a backup camera here in the Tribeca and uh, not to forget check your surrounding before backing up by the way I'm on the passenger seat are you scared at the bottom of the infotainment you'll find all your button uh, to control the uh, infotainment and you also have a GPS you'll find here some big knobs to use the radio and when you turn it you'll hear a click which is so much satisfying to use right underneath you'll find some climate control and I adore it because all you need to do is just turn it a little bit and it's also so satisfying to use <laughs> Aww. Although you have a lot of button and it will take a little bit of time to get used to it.
Underneath the, the climate control, you'll find your switch for your heated seats on both sides, which have three levels of uh, temperature. Unlike a Ford, which they pretend to be tough, using the shifter and switching from gears, it's really rough and tough in that SUV. Here you'll find two cup holders and storage space here, which you have two sections. Through the sunroof, you won't find any kind of switch like that these days. These are rugged switch for opening a sunroof. The presentation is great and the quality for the year is very surprising. Here you'll find a flat six cylinder engine, 3.6 liter and have 256 horsepower and 247 foot-pounds of torque and combined to a five-speed automatic transmission, average 13 liters per 100 kilometer. This is the second best engine that Subaru have made and everything is well placed to maintain except for the spark plug which can be a little bit more complicated to replace. On the Trivico you'll find on disc brake on each corner and dependent suspension on each corner and it's the best all-wheel drive in its class. Also, it can tow 3,500 pounds. The fact that it can tow 3,500 pounds is good, but less than the competition which can tow 5,000 pounds. Driving the Tribeca, first thing I've noticed is the, visib the visibility, which is pretty good. And thanks to the weird driving position. Another thing is, the sound of thing is average, it's not better, it's not worse than the, the other competition. The steering wheel is heavier than the Ikea that I've, I've tried previously. Plus, it's hydraulic, so I definitely feel the road and I know what I'm doing. It's allowed a very secure driving experience. Accelerating with your Tribeca. I have no, um, I won't have any problem overtaking a car with that SUV. The acceleration are average, it's not fast, but it's not slow either. The engine is the smoothest uh, engine of its class by far. Even though the ride height of the Tropica is higher than the competition, it still have a great handling. It's not a garnering machine, we still have some body roll, but the handling is still better than the competition. The suspension is very good, uh, we don't feel the bumps, and the seats are very comfortable. Overall, the Tribico have a good ex uh, driving experience, and for the price, it's hard to beat. So, Henry, the Tribeca, where do we scale it? Where do we place it on the Canadian scale? I approve. Why? I approve because for that kind of mileage, for a seven-seat passenger, uh, a reliable engine, uh, a lot of cargo space, average for its class, I'll approve it. I agree with you. Uh, at $7,000, it's a lot of vehicle. If we see uh, against what it competes, like a Pilot, a Honda Pilot, or a Highlander, the price, you'll never find something at this price in the, on, the, on the side, Toyota sides, Hyundai Veracruz sides, no. Uh, forget the Veracruz, the engine blow out all the time. <laughs> and the other, but actually you're bringing a point. There's a few of them that are as cheap or cheaper uh, in this class. I'm thinking about the Santa Fe, but, but the Santa Fe, the all-wheel drive is unavailable with the four-cylinder and the four-cylinder drink like, you won't believe it, it does 14 liter per 100 kilometers and it's not all-wheel drive. And the V6 blow out. So, you end up with the only, the only real vehicle that can really match this vehicle uh, are the Pilot, the Islander. So, at this price, it's a hell of a bargain. Yeah. So, jump on it. There's not a lot of them, but if you find one, jump on it. Canadian approved. Canadian approved.